So I had to do a double take when I saw this, but apparently NZXT has launched their own subscription model where for as little as $50 a month, you can have a gaming PC shipped to your house and you can keep it as long as you want and you can cancel whenever you want. They're calling it NZXT Flex. And to be clear, this is an actual subscription. It's not a payment plan. It's not a rent to own plan. So what we are gonna do today is break down the details of this subscription, figure out who it's for and if it actually makes financial sense. But I can tell you right now, what doesn't make financial sense, shopping for a gaming monitor and not using the completely free tool that I have built over at techaudit.tv. This tool automatically analyzes all the prices, historical prices of today's most popular gaming monitors. So it makes it super easy for you to spot where the hot deals are. And did I mention it's completely free? I will link to it in the description. Make sure you bookmark it. You're welcome. So with that said, let's take a look at this NZXT Flex that I came across. So this is an actual subscription. And, and if you're familiar with NZXT, you know that they sell pre-builds. If I go up here and click on gaming PCs, their three most popular pre-builds are player one, player two, and player three. And you know, as the names kind of imply, the PCs get more powerful the, the higher the number. So you can still just go ahead and buy these PCs here. Or now, if you don't have the money, you can just do a subscription. So you can see here, player one is the cheapest, $49 a month, player two is 109, and player three is 169. It's the most expensive subscription available. And it literally is a subscription. It's not a rent to own. It's not a payment plan. It's cheaper than a payment plan short term. We'll get to the numbers in a minute. But you can see here, it's month to month. You can cancel anytime. There is no cancellation fee. Uh, the only fee that you would incur that you might not be aware of right off the bat is there is a one-time shipping slash setup fee of $50. So if you did just uh, subscribe to this computer for one month and you did the cheapest one, it would be 50 plus 50. Uh, and that would be basically $99, $100 for that one month if you were just to cancel. When you cancel, they will send you a prepaid shipping label for you to slap onto the box and send it back. Make sure you keep that box because if you lose that box at any time during your subscription, you are liable for it and they can charge you for a new box to send out. So you wanna make sure that you actually keep that. Uh, there is uh, no fee. So every single part that comes in your computer, it is fully it's a lifetime warranty. So if something happens to the GPU or the fan stops working or the cooler, it's not like when you buy a part and usually it's for a certain amount of years, it is for as long as you have the subscription, uh, they will go ahead and cover that. Now that's if it's not your fault. If you had something stolen or you were irresponsible with something or you, um, you know, your kid had a baseball bat and just walked in the room and hit it uh, and, you, and you dented the case that you are liable for, and you would need to uh, basically pay to have that part replaced. They do mention things about upgrades. It's kind of weird because if you go down here to the FAQ, you can see about like what upgrade options are available. They keep saying this thing, I've said it twice in this page, as a subscriber, you also get regular refresh upgrades based on the NZXT Flex subscription you choose every one year, every two years. I went to go sign up for a Flex subscription. At no point was there any option for me to like select when I get upgrades. And when I talked to support, maybe they just weren't really trained on it, but they didn't really have any answers. It was kind of nuanced. And it's also odd because when you go up here, you can see that upgrade charge, you can switch your PC or upgrade for a $100 fee. Once we get to the numbers, uh, like financially, I don't think this really matters. So anyway, they have this subscription here. It, oh, it just is the PC. So you still gotta have your keyboard, the monitor, the mouse, all of that kind of stuff. Just like if you were to buy the pre-build, this is only available, you can see here, for uh, you have to be in the US and you can't be in Hawaii or Alaska. So no international uh, viewers, sorry, viewers, no international gamers. This is US only. So let's take a look at the cost breakdown here. If you were to just buy this player one with the $75 shipping, all these prices factor in shipping, they do not factor in tax. So keep that in mind, just because taxes vary. Uh, 824 bucks is how much it would cost you outright just to buy this from them. If you were to build it yourself, based on me specking out the, the different parts and everything, uh, you're, you're saving about $50. So actually not a bad deal to just pay someone the extra 50 bucks to build this uh, and, and get all that extra warranty and stuff like that that you may not get uh, individually. 
Now, if you look here, you can see one month is going to cost you minimum $99 for the player one, and it, start, it starts to get more expensive. And once you hit around that 18 month mark, now, which I guess it would be, if you really do the math, it would be around like 16 months. Once you hit 16 months, you quote unquote break even, you quote unquote, it, this is just stupid, okay? I, it's hard for me to like talk about these numbers and not just say like, why would you do this? I was thinking about this long and hard. Who is this for? Because if you're broke, this is gonna make you more broke. Now, there are some situations. Maybe you're the type where you have money for a gaming PC. You're seriously thinking about it. Or maybe you're seriously thinking about doing something to invest your time to make the money. Uh, you know, you're gonna mow a bunch of lawns. You're gonna do whatever. It's like work your butt off to get a gaming PC. But you're the type that gets excited about something and then you get it. And then like two months later, you're not really using it anymore. Kind of like how everyone's gonna be with the Apple Vision. A headset, like half the people who own it, it's probably collecting dust already because it's it's fun at first and then you realize, uh, this isn't for me. And that would suck if you went out and you bought something like the Player 3 PC, which up front costs uh, three, $2,374. Imagine spending that and then you realize after like a month or two that you really don't play that much. And, and maybe PC gaming's not for you. Maybe you're just more of a PS5 or an Xbox person. That's fine. And so, you know, uh, renting a PC for uh, three months and then calling it good, you're out 150 bucks. That's fine. That, that makes sense. And even if, to go, even if you go and buy a PC, like it's not the end of the world. But if you're actually planning on like, holy cow, I don't have cash for a gaming PC for $50 a month, I can just always be able to play games. That's fun for like a year. But then you start to do the math and you realize this isn't so fun right? And I mean, look at this. If you keep this computer for three years, which if you're a PC player right now, how long are you using that PC before you make any upgrades? I would bet that most of you really aren't making any upgrades for the first two years. And if you are, it's stuff like additional storage, it's upgrading your RAM. Like these are upgrades that for the most part can cost less than a hundred dollars, maybe under $200 and you're probably replacing or like dramatically rebuilding your PC minimum once every three years, unless you're like a super hardcore PC building uh, type of person. And look at that, just this PC alone, the PC that you could have just bought for $824, after year three, you've already spent $990 more than have you had you just bought it right? So it gets expensive. Now, so that's where a payment plan is interesting. And I wanted to spec that into this as well. And by the way, I'm going to link to this spreadsheet down below for you to check this. Uh, if you want to look at all three plans, uh, you know, right next to each other. But if you take a look at this, you can see that if you don't have the 800 plus dollars up front, you could do a payment plan. This is based on a firm who NZXT partners with, and it's at an, it's at an average 15% uh, APR. It could be as high as 30 with them, depending on your credit, and, and it could be lower. But let's just go with the 15% APR. If you were to break this into a 12 month plan where you're paying a little bit more than the $50, which I'm sure you can do, if you've got the 50, you know, get get the extra 20, $24 together. And at the end of the year, yes, you just spent an additional $68 in interest, but then you're done. Then you, you own it and you have no more payments versus if you're subscribing to this thing, you've just like, you got $638, but you still don't own this thing. And as soon as you stop paying, you got to send it back. And if you take a look at the player two, the, oops, sorry, windows here. If you take a look at player two, you can see that the savings go a little bit higher you know, versus pre-build, buy it from them or building it yourself. And this is, this is factoring a founder's edition graphics card, which this one uses. Uh, according to their marketing material, if you didn't do a founder's edition, you could probably actually save closer to like three, three fifty uh, by building it yourself. But you know, nevertheless, let's look at these numbers. You can see pretty much it's the same bad math, just at a higher scale. Now you two, you know, three years, you've just spent twenty three hundred dollars on a sixteen seven seventeen hundred dollar computer, and then you go up to player three. Look at that. After three years, if you were to hold this thing for three years, you just spent $3,700 on a PC that cost 
24. So there's the math for you. You can see here that this just does not make sense for somebody who is trying to save money. Maybe if you're traveling for like a long period of time and you really want a gaming PC at whatever place for a month or two, then that makes sense. But otherwise, if you're doing this with the thinking of, I can't afford a PC, but I can af afford to um, subscribe to one, here's some financial advice. That type of thinking will keep you poor, okay? Don't do the subscription if, if your plan is to hold this thing long term. So I, I went ahead and read the contract for you so you don't have to. And by the way, I am not a lawyer. I am not a financial advisor. This is just me, an idiot, going through this for you to see if there's any any anything interesting in here. Basically, if you stop paying, uh, they'll start to assess like a 5% fee uh, or $20, whichever is bigger after 30 days. So if you go 30 days without paying, you're gonna start getting you're gonna start getting penalties. If you try to charge back your card, you will get a $50 reversal fee. So not only will you still have to pay that amount, but they're gonna tack a $50 fee on top of that. If 60 days go by and you you still, excuse me, you still have not paid, then they will basically take legal that you're gonna go to collections and have to deal with all of that kind of crap. Obviously you don't want to do that. Now they say this is not a rent to own program and it's not, there's nothing, there's no built in mechanisms to, to show you how far along you are before you can just own it. However, when you look at the contract, it says here, if the subscriber, that would be you, if you seek to purchase the computer or anything else that is part of this, you know, agreement, then, uh, NZXT may, but they're not required to, but they may decide to say, hey, yeah, we'll go ahead and sell that to you. Now, maybe this becomes more common as their PCs start to get age. And yeah, if a subscriber has had it for nine months, and they're like, look, I love this thing, how much? Um, they will then tell you like, okay, we'll sell it to you for this much. Uh, it does say that operator may provide, may is the key word there, may provide a discount on it based on the estimated value and whatnot. So they tech, they don't have to, it's not like they're just gonna be like, oh, well, you've already paid 900 bucks and it's a thousand, so you only owe us a hundred. Highly doubt that's gonna happen. You're still gonna spend more than um, you than you would had you just you know bought it outright. So it's not exactly a loophole. And again, there's no guarantees. They might just say, sorry, like we have so many people wanting to subscribe. We're gonna make more money by just grabbing the PC off you and giving it to someone else and they're gonna be paying 50, 160, whatever dollars a month. Uh, let's see, service suspension. So at, this, was a, this was an interesting part, and I call this service suspicion because there's a line here that makes me suspicious. Un, so if, if you uh, have not paid, after 15 calendar days of not paying, it says here that they have the action, they are allowed to, but not limited to, so they could even do more, using technological methods to reduce uh, function, functionality or disable rental devices. How would NZXT, maybe I'm missing something obvious here, but does that mean that NZXT will have software installed on these computers that give them remote access? And if they get remote, remote access, what else do they have access to? You start to have some privacy questions here. Because again, this is not your PC. It would be wrong to send these PCs out that you bought with their own essential you know, spyware, the ability to take over things, but you have privacy concerns there. So I'm curious, what does that mean exactly that NZXT after 15 days can use methods to reduce the functionality or disable rental devices outside of sending someone to your front door? What are they able to do? That's a question. This one thing here, I don't know if this is just a common thing that you know legal jargon they throw in just in case, but it does say that for each rental device. So for all the, the stuff that you're getting, you need to, you're, you're required to have purchase or sorry, you're required to have insurance purchased on your pre-build PC in case something happens. Now NZXT's website says nothing about this. And I imagine they just throw this in there in the event that maybe you just, you, you, someone breaks into your house and they steal it. And you're like, look, I legit don't have money to pay for that then they can at least, they can turn around and say, well, you were required to have insurance. Where's your insurance? That was part of the agreement kind of thing. And maybe this is just common legal things that people, it's thrown in there just in case, but 
in reality, it, it never you know comes to fruition. But that was interesting. And I, I want to say that was everything in here. Uh, warranty. So basically, it does say that you, uh, you should be at least 18 years old to use uh, NZXT's uh, subscription service. Now, let me take a, one last quick look at the website, see if there's anything else that uh, I, I wanted to cover. It does not impact your credit. They do do a soft uh, credit pool, but it doesn't like make any bank statements. It's not going to raise or hurt anything there. The only time it would hurt your credit, as it says on here, is if you just don't pay and uh, you know collections has to come after you there. But otherwise, if, if anything goes wrong, it's all covered. It's lifetime. It just doesn't make sense. Even if you were to factor in the costs of you buying the computer and upgrading it yourself, you could build two PCs for the price of one by the time you have this for any decent length of time. So again, this does not make sense other than the special situations I've already described. I'm confused by it. I get why NZXT does it because if I'm the business, this is this is printing money, practically. Um, I don't know. It's it, it's interesting. I'm not like accusing of, of, NZX, of NZXT preying on broke gamers, but it just does not make any financial sense. Make it make financial sense if you're watching this, saying Brandon, this makes total sense. Uh, educate me because I haven't thought of it yet. And, and Hey, I'm open-minded here. So let me know what you think is NZXT flex something that you are interested in, or do you see benefits beyond the testing things out slash traveling or other special circumstances? Is there actual wisdom in ditching the idea of owning a PC and just always renting a PC? I don't see it, but let me know what you think until next time. Thanks for watching.